Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show how you can take an image that looks like this and quickly turn it into something that looks like this. That editing time for that photo only takes about five seconds, believe it or not, and I'm going to show you how fast you can do that using a simple Photoshop action. I do this with so many of my exterior shots, even sometimes that they don't need to bring out so much of that shadow depth that you saw. Those were, that was a very shadowy looking image, but it's something that you can really pull off if you have the right type of camera, which is once again why I stress so much throughout my other videos and books and getting good camera gear. I'm going to get into that in more detail as well as the steps involved to make this action for yourself so you can quickly pull off an editing stunt like this and once again that exterior photo about five seconds of editing time boom save it on to the next. So you're ready to get started to see how this is done? Let's go. So let's start off here to show you how quick this was done. This is one of the images. I'm going to show another one over here. But this is the image here and you can see that I've got my actions window up here. You can see under tutorial actions I've got this one called single exterior max DR and that's the one that I'm going to show you how to build. So if you don't have your action window up you can go to window and then you should see actions. Sometimes you'll see the action window. It might I'll just detach it here. Sometimes you'll see it over here on the sidebar and it'll be uh, just shown here as like a little arrow off to the side here and you can expand it like that. So however you want to arrange it, I like to have it separate um, and on the uh, bar over here a lot of times when I'm doing a lot of this type of work. There's a lot of stuff you can do with also showing these as the button mode and all that so you can see them quickly. But anyways, that's all up to you. Preference a little uh, off topic here. But anyways, under these tutorial actions, we're going to build another one like this. To show you though how this is done, first let's run through the action. I go ahead and select it and I'm just going to hit play. And here we go in five, four, three, two, one, there it was about five seconds. We're done. So there is our image. It is all completely edited. Now, if you noticed what happened, there was a few different layers that were created. So first off, we started with this was the image and then this was made and then this was made and then this layer was made. And I'm going to do this action with showing all three of these layers um, on top of here so that if you want to then fine tune something, you can then add a layer mask or do further editing on something else. So it gives you a lot more flexibility. But once again, we take it from this, we're going up to here. Now, how was that done? Okay, let's just back out of here. Let's go to our history and let's go to where we just opened that file. Now, what we want to do is go to the actions window. And I'm going to, under the tutorial actions folder in my actions window, I'm going to create a new one. Now, you can create other folders. There's a little folder icon down here where you can create a new set, as they call it, um, in Photoshop. Um, I'm going to just underneath it here, create the new action. And by the way, before starting this, just preface this a little bit. This is a TIFF file, but you can use a RAW file. This could have been opened from Lightroom as you're doing all of your real estate photo editing. I just happened to drag and drop this from Bridge. Doesn't really matter either way. But if you do know from all of my other videos and some of the books is that I love for when it comes to exterior photos, I like to convert my RAWs into TIFFs using OEM software thereby preserving some of that proprietary information. I've got a link to a video, a tutorial where I talk about that in more depth and that'll be one of the links I have in the description for this video as well as some other videos to help you along and some other pertinent links. So anyways, let's get started making this tutorial, this uh, particular action. So under tutorial actions, however, just like making any other action, I'm going to create a new action hitting this little plus sign. And let's call this one the, uh, we'll call it uh, example of this action <laughs> for whatever reason. So just we keep it separate from the one that I'm using. So next is you just press record. Now what I want to do is I want to start duplicating layers and doing something with them. So to duplicate the layer and make sure that it shows into an action, do control J. I'm on Windows, so it's control, not command. So anyways, control J, and I've now got a duplicate layer up here. With that automatically selected, I want to go up to filter, camera raw filter. 
And that's going to bring up, you might be familiar with this, looks a lot like Lightroom. At the very top up here, what I want to do is I want to increase the shadows to 100%. And that's it. And then click OK. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I could do that in Lightroom, which you could, but you can't do the next step. And that's where we're going to repeat it. I'm going to now duplicate this layer again by doing another Control J. Then I'm going to go back to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and once again, I'm going to increase those shadows by 100%. So now what I've done is I've increased the shadows by 200%. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, you're going to have tons of noise. I'm going to cover that in a second and show you this won't have any noise and why it won't have any noise. Now you can see that we've already made some big improvements bringing out the shadows, but we're going to take this further. We want a finished product out of this. And so far it's looking, yeah, kind of HDRs, maybe a little fake. So once again, let's duplicate this layer again. Control J. Now we'll go up to Filter, open up Camera Raw Filter, and we'll do a few more things here. When you're increasing the shadows like this, to give it back the punch, you want to drop the blacks. You want to add contrast. But doing this also with a, an image that was shot with these settings, which I'll cover also in just a second, you can increase the exposure a little bit. So let's increase the exposure, let's say by just about a third of a stop, 0.3. Okay, now it's brighter than what we'd like, but we want to really add contrast. So let's add some contrast in there, bring it up to about 15 or so, drop the highlights down like that. Now what we can do is increase the shadows even a little bit more if we want. Now we drop our blacks and we increase our whites. Now we're adding a bunch of punch into this picture. Now we can start adding also a little bit more saturation into it, a little bit of vibrance, maybe that'll bring out those blues in the sky like that. We can even bring up the shadows a little bit more, drop our highlights till we see something where it looks about like this. Now what you can do at this point is you could pause the screen and take a look now at these settings that I'm using. It's just these simple sliders so you can remember this then for your particular action. Moving along here too, if you haven't sharpened uh, yet on your step bringing it in here, you could do this in this step. These were already sharpened when I used the OEM software to convert the RAWs to TIFF, so I'm not going to sharpen them again, but you certainly could do it here. Either way, when you're done, you click OK. All right, and that is it. Now we can stop our action from recording by pressing the stop button. Okay, so what we did was, let's start from the bottom to recap. We went from here, we duplicated a layer and went 100% shadows, duplicated that layer once again, and then we went to 100% shadows, and that's that layer then that's up above here. Now we duplicated that layer again and then added that punch into it. So this wasn't adding much shadow, this was adding a little bit more exposure and really dropping our black. So once again, we went from this to this. Now all you have to do is just flatten the image and save it or save it as a JPEG. However you wanna do it in your workflow, that would be that step. Now let's take a look at, we can do this with another image. And we'll just do this same one. I'll take this and run that same action again, the one I called example of this action. And we'll just play that. And in just a few seconds, we've got ourselves a finished image. Looks pretty good. Once again, this started out as this, and it ended up like this. Now this had extreme shadows, and you might be thinking to yourself, well, there's gonna be a lot of noise because we increased the shadows 200%, then we increased the shadows even more, and the whites, and added all that punch to get our final image. So let's go in here 100% and take a closer look. So going in here and looking pixel peeping, we really don't see any noise. There is no noise on here. And you're wondering to yourself, well, why isn't there any noise on this? There should be. And you would think that there would be increasing this much shadow. Well, for one, we're not increasing necessarily exposure so much as we're increasing shadows. Two, we were using also TIFF files when we were editing this and also this image here. But most importantly, 
is that this was shot with a very good camera. Now, believe it or not, it was an older Nikon D610. But with that, it's a full frame camera, and most importantly, compared to a crop sensor camera, is that the photo sites on the sensor are larger than they would be for the same megapixel type camera if it were to be cropped. So having those large sensor sites on the sensor, those photo sites, allows us to gather more light, more information, so there's less information that then is lost. And once again, it's a TIFF or a RAW file, so a lot of that information is retained. It gives us a lot of editing capabilities. So this is another reason too why to be sure that you've got a good sensor with good sensor photo sites. I've got a link to a tutorial video that I have that covers that. It calls the sensor size matter, and it covers some of those things. So anyways, once again, if you've got a newer camera, a very modern Modern camera, uh, for instance, a, a, a newer uh, Canon, newer Nikon, uh, like the Canon R line or the Nikon Z line, um, or you've got yourself a Sony uh, A7 III or uh, some of the newer ones out of that uh, line, then you're not going to be having a problem doing this by bringing that much shadow out. Anyways, once again, this is my favorite action to use simply just taking that photo that started out with just this single exposure, applying that action action and boop, we've got this a finished product. Well, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.